Hello and welcome to Kitchen Counter Crafts. If you like this video, would you please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Today's video is back to basics and it is how to write with a fountain pen. And I actually wanted to make this video because I have several people, like several friends who have been wanting to know they see me writing with fountain pens, but then they get really intimidated very fast. So this video is really for you. If you are considering fountain pens or if you already use fountain pens, maybe there's a few tips that I can share that you might want to know more about, like maybe just learn a few new things. And before I begin, I have a little story and that is I've been writing with fountain pens since I was five because in the country that I grew up in, we would write with fountain pens in school. And so they're school issued, they're just like a Schaefer student type of a fountain pen, but we used to have them at our desk that you keep it there at, in class and you just write with a fountain pen. So I'm telling you that story because if a five-year-old can write with a fountain pen, so can you. And don't be intimidated because it's just a pen at the end of the day. Uh, I know people think it looks fancy and things like that, but it's actually really, really simple to use. That's why it's been used for centuries and so, uh, or over a century, I should say. Before that, it was quills or dip pens, but it's kind of the same, same idea. The other thing I wanted to share with you is that my husband is uh, like loved to write with mechanical pencils. And I say loved uh, past tense because now he is a fountain pen aficionado. And I had one of the hardest times basically converting him over to this because he thought they were too fussy or fancy or whatever. And so he honestly kind of has me beat on the whole fountain pen um, hobby situation now. So I... I just encourage you, if you are just thinking about it, to just just try it out. So what do you need to get started? It's actually very, again, a very simple hobby. And uh, I have several videos on beginner fountain pens, but here's one of the beginner ones. It's just beautiful looking. Um, and you can check out, ch the, that's a Pilot Metropolitan. I have a video on that. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite pens. And so you just need a, a fountain pen and you need some ink and then you need paper and don't get tangled up too much in the beginning as the hobby grows so will your love for paper and uh, but in the beginning just just grab what you have handy but just in terms of like people start adding up the cost and they're like oh my goodness thirty dollars for a fountain pen 15 for an ink bottle and then how much for paper so don't freak out, just a little bit at a time. There's always birthdays and Christmases and Mother's Days and you know so on and so forth. There's always reasons to ask for like a ink bottle instead of flowers or you know something like that. So the nice thing is once this is your hobby, people find out and they hopefully will give you some nice fountain pen gifts. But uh, this is, uh, at, it's not an Apica, but uh, this is a knockoff from Daiso, and this notebook was like two bucks, uh, but it is fountain pen friendly paper. So this is just $2 for a very pretty little notebook. And Apica is not that much more. It's like $5, I think five or six at the time of filming this video. Another great uh, cheap, cheapish alternative is a Rhodia pad, and this is a dot pad, and it has great fountain pen friendly paper and when i say fountain pen friendly i mean that the colors of the inks are going to show up really well on pads that have that are made for fountain pens also oh, as i was going to say there's less bleed through usually unless you're putting a big blob of ink down i don't know where that's from oh maybe that hmm, odd okay so uh, I just proved myself wrong. And then one of the things I do, because I, I write a lot of notes for work, I just use regular old ledger pads and things like that. So your fountain pen will work on just regular notebook paper, cheapy pads. Uh, so you can definitely do that as well. Um, you, you can even have, uh, you know, shimmer inks show up on notebook paper. This one is showing off the Ferris wheel press brilliant beanstalk ink and so you can actually see shimmer on there as well so and then plain copy paper 
All right, so that's what I'm gonna actually practice on between this one and the copy paper so that you get a pretty good idea of what writing with a fountain pen looks like. So you, you just need pen, ink, and paper, just regular old paper for today. And I'm gonna use one of my um, pens that I love to write with, and this is a Pilot Custom 74. I have a video on this. This is not a beginner pen, just so you know. And uh, it's just one that I've, I mean, it's always on my desk. It's always ink. The ink is running out in here, so I need to refill it. But anyway, this is just one of those pens that I really love and use quite often. So uh, you want to, figure out how to how to just basically begin. So one of the things I'm gonna just say right off the bat is don't put too much pressure down when you are uh, just learning how to use or write with a fountain pen. You want to position the paper, just you know, sit down like you normally do or stand up as I'm standing up at my kitchen counter. And I actually uh, position my pads, this is like, this is, looking at me straight and this is at a angle I usually write at an angle I usually write at about a 45 degree angle and uh, that's just what I'm used to um, and so you'll see me turn 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 turning even more as I'm talking so just hold the pen at the grip so this is the nib, just so you know, and I'm gonna do another video on fountain pen anatomy. So that's the nib right there. And then this is the grip. And uh, so you can hold it at the grip. And then this is the body of the pen. And then the, you know, the barrel, uh, basically, and the ink goes in there. And so you're gonna hold it here. And I actually hold mine fairly at the top, right by the, the collar here right by the nib um, but people say like hold this up higher that these should be these fingers should be lower but I pretty much kind of pinch my pen like this and then I write now one of the things that um, many people will tell you is that you are supposed to be writing with your arm this way horizontally across the page and not necessarily like this. Okay, I'm just telling you, that's the, the standard. I normally end up writing with my hand, which causes more fatigue. However, fountain pens actually lessen that, but you're supposed to be moving your arm across the page like this, okay? So, and what that does is gives you consistency also when you're writing, and this is just a little bit like an FYI, when you're writing with a fountain pen, there is a sweet spot. There's a pen called the Lamy 2000, and in on that pen, people get really frustrated with it because they will go like this and not even know. They'll start turning their pen, and then it's not going to write. Now, this will write at whatever angle, but see, this if you tur keep turning it, it's not gonna write very well, although it, yeah, it's not, not doing that. So um, as you find, if you start running out of ink on paper, it's probably you, especially if you just filled up the pen with ink. So it's not necessarily the pen's fault. So before we write here, you can write with the pen unposted or posted. And I always got that confused because this is posted, this is capped. So that's how you cap the pen, that's how you post it. And you have it here. In case you're wondering what my tag is, that's not the price tag, it's just what ink I have in there because I always forget. I have a, not that great of a system, so I will always forget. But um, since I don't write with my pens posted, I set the cap down so the tag does not bother me. But I also have smaller hands. That brings me to another thing. How do you pick your pen? Make sure you, um, if you have larger hands, you wanna make sure you're picking a larger size pen. Um, so you don't wanna go with a pen that's too short, like a Pilot Pereira, uh, which is like four inches. So make sure you watch a video that has a ruler uh, where they're comparing it to different, different types of pens. All right, so uh, thumb and Four finger, 45 degrees, and just write that down here so you can do 
posted or unposted. Okay, there we go. Um, you can write at about a 40 to 55 degree angle. And I'm just printing right now. And then you need to also watch your writing position. So that means, um, oh, and then write with moving your arm, not hand, all right? And then um, the pressure should be just, just light pressure. So this is not a ballpoint pen, in case you didn't notice. Ballpoints actually fatigue your hand a lot faster than a fountain pen will. This is what I'm gonna actually um, share with you. And that is, this should, the pen should slide and glide on the paper. Even on bad paper, it should slide and glide. And when you start using fountain pen friendly paper, you're gonna really see that difference there because this kind of paper will actually grab onto your, your uh, nib just a bit. Um, also, you need to watch out for the speed at which you write because if you start writing super fast, the ink flow is not really gonna keep up with you. Although for most people, the way that you write, it should be just fine. So right now I'm, I'm writing uh, I'm printing um, and you can actually also then write in cursive and your pen should actually hold on really well. The big things here are just to relax, take a deep breath, relax, slow down, slow down your writing. Um, also, use your fountain pen for everything everything. So I use it for grocery lists. I use it for taking notes at work. I use it for writing letters. I write it. I use it for writing everything. So use it for everything because that's the wonderful thing about it. And if you have family members, they'll remember you, you know, taking your, your pen out of your pocket or your purse and really start associating you with your pen. And um, this is more of like how to write with a pen, not necessarily like how to write, but once you pick up a fountain pen, one of the first things I ask my friends to do, like especially when they're scared and this is the first time they've ever used a fountain pen, is I will tell them, do this, write, just grab my pen and I'll tell them, don't push down hard, but write down your signature, not write your signature, but not write the word signature, but actually sign your name on the paper and just see how that feels. And I'll tell you, that's pretty much it. Like most people will sign their name and then they'll say, yeah, that's different. That's totally different. They love it. So it kind of takes that um, scared factor out. And I think it just really shows you what a joy it is to write with a fountain pen. Now, if you are left-handed, I am right-handed, but if you're left-handed, would you leave some tips down below? I would love to hear that. Uh, one of the things that I've heard for left-handers is actually keep your pad or your paper perpendicular. Don't turn it at an angle because then your tendency when you're writing is not gonna be to smear as much. So. For left-handers, that's one of the tips that I have found. Um, the other tip I thought w was good for right or left-handers actually, was to, for starters, start with a drier ink or an ink that dries super fast. So one is Parker Quink, which has been used forever and ever. It's actually a cheaper ink. Um, it's not in quality and just in price. It's just a great standardized ink. It's available in blue or black. So those are your choices. And, uh, you know, I kind of say every, everybody needs a blue ink and everybody needs a black ink. And those are just fantastic inks to have. So that's, those are some of the things that, 
I just would, you know, just some tips on uh, begin for beginners. Your um, signature is probably the, the best way to just kind of start. You can also, you know, just make some some lines. Just just try those out. Uh, make some some loops with a pen and see how well it does. Uh, you can also do this, which is just fun anyway. Like when I'm writing notes, I find myself doing some of this. Uh, by the way, this nib that I'm writing with is a fine, and it's a Japanese fine. So you're gonna see that, like uh, I'm gonna have my, my nib video coming out next, and I'll compare nibs for you so that you have a opportunity just to kind of quickly learn about um, just nibs for beginners as well. So I hope that video was helpful to you. Um, if you are a fountain pen lover and have some tips that are better, uh, would you please just share them or maybe something I didn't cover. Um, if you will just share that in the comments, I would really appreciate that. I know others will as well. So until next time, bye.